do not want to mess up this saw. Yeah. Just don't hit my blade. Your blade. Too. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. That sucker, them 2x12s is tight. You gonna make it out? Never had that happen before. Woo. That was a pretty difficult cut. The beam saw was struggling because I was getting such a bad pinch in the lumber. I'm cutting the rafters for the porch, so I'm very excited about this. Uh, we're gonna get this porch hopefully framed up today, so definitely uh, stick around to the end and hopefully you can see if we make that goal. But with these rafters, I'm gonna use that same math I shared in a previous video about the corner bracing. I'm gonna use my run, my rise, and it's gonna give me the exact diagonal that I need to, uh, to cut this rafter. 11 foot run, four inch pitch, which is my 412 pitch. It's gonna give me a rise of three foot, eight inches. Now what I gotta do, because my purlin sit on top of this plane, on the top of this truss, that three foot, eight, rise is actually uh, where the roof line is going to plane in from my fascia to the wall. So I need to take away the dimension of the purlin, which on a 412 pitch is 3 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. So minus 3, 13 sixteenths, that's 3 foot 4 and 3 sixteenths. So that's my new rise. And then I'm going to go 4 inch pitch, and that's going to give me my new run. That does not make sense. Oh, shit. I think I used the wrong dimension, that's why. Oh, stupid Kyle. Four inch pitch. My diagonal is three and 11 sixteenths. Yeah, okay, that's why. Okay, I was confused there. I got this all figured out now. Let's do this again. <laughs> it's gonna give me a run of 10 foot, 15 sixteenths. That way I know where to mark my framing for this rafter to sit. And I'm gonna cut them at 10 foot, seven and a half. So I'm just gonna hook the tip here. 10 foot seven and a half and that is the long point of my reverse 412 pitch so now when i say a reverse 412 pitch if i were to put this square like so it's going to give me the same 412 pitch that i have up on that side right i flip the square over and now it's going to give me the exact opposite so i can line up right where i put my 10 foot seven and a half make my mark come down here and you'll see that I can't quite reach it that way but it's no big deal I just flip it over and it's always going to be the exact same pitch so now I have my reverse 412 pitch and it's going to create the perfect rafter and when they don't move on me they stay together I've got four matched rafters, which is gonna help ensure that the building is nice and consistent. Everything is good. I might as well mark all my purlin locations as well while they're exactly where I want them. Uh, what I have to do is, once again, I'm gonna use math, which I'm not gonna go over. It's the same math to calculate where that first purlin ends up on the top cord of this rafter here. So I've already done the math, it's 12 and 15 sixteenths so I'm gonna go ahead and square that across set my tape measure across the top I'm gonna lock it down so it doesn't go anywhere and I'm gonna line up two foot right on the mark here I just did because that's my spacing of my purlins and I'm gonna mark two four six eight ten and then I've got a space up here that's a little odd but on the top of my truss rafter whatever I always mark four and a half inches, and that is the top location. And all four of these should be basically identical. All right, so here we've got our ledger board that we're screwing into our two by 12 header, and that's what's gonna support the ceiling, but also um, it's gonna support these two by sixes that go out to create our overhang and also support the ceiling of the roof. But what I gotta do is, I'm gonna go ahead and notch this inch and a half by three and a half out so that it sits over top of this ledger board. So there we go, we got a nice little notch here and uh, this is not gonna be carrying much weight at all. It's literally gonna be carrying a couple sheets of steel which weigh 70 pounds per 
hundred square foot. So this is, uh, this is a really nice easy detail and we'll also have some perpendicular framing to support this span of steel. Three foot four, five sixteenths. So it doesn't slide down for right now. You're gonna be 10 foot and 15 16, Greg. This lift is so annoying. Well, I can't hear what the sound of the lift rocking. Bro, <laughs> real. <laughs> Dude, look at them cuts though, huh? Not bad. Not bad. Ready? Yeah. Okay, you go ahead and get it where you want it. Right there. Go ahead and put a screw in it. You just go ahead and lift yours up. Well, I'll do whatever you need. Take her up and move it towards the wall. Go ahead. Oh. I am exactly on my mark here. I don't know about perfectly plumb. I'll check that. So now that we've got these rafters framed in, we can go ahead and do our purlins, which we're gonna do the exact same way that we do the purlins up on our trusses. And that's uh, maybe a little bit confusing to people because we have this six by six cedar header out here. And you're thinking maybe, why don't you just do a, you know, a two by six or two by eight rafter, two foot on center. Um, honestly, it's because I don't want the supporting weight on those six by six beams at all. I can't really guarantee that they're gonna stay put. So by not having any weight on them, I don't have to worry about them sagging over time. The way our, our porches are designed, we've got the rafter or the pseudo truss that we make resting on the post or column of the post frame, as well as the post or column out here on the porch. So we know that it's gonna be you know, always load bearing right to a foundation, no support through the middle, which is the beauty of post frame. That one get leveled up. What's that? That one get leveled up. Yeah, I did actually. level first. Should be perfect. Hmm? Should be perfect. Yes sir, yes sir. Let's see that with my eyeball. Pretty good my son. I'll meet you up there? Yep. How's the miter, Greg? Miter? Or really here to celebrate? You good on the inside? Dang. I mean, I hate throwing around the word perfect, but that's, that's pretty, pretty dang near perfect. It looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, go ahead and uh, just double check on this column to be Love good. Them. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't change anything. Whoop. It's all you, man. Now wait, now wait, just wait. Don't, don't try and. Okay. Whoa, bro. Beauteous, huh? That was amazing. Not bad.
think we got to remember we don't have any screws really other than some toenails into the post so they're just sitting there yeah we gotta do some screws So now we got all of our framing where we want it. We can snap a line on these uh, tails for our overhangs. We're going to create a perfectly straight overhang. And then we're going to use that perfectly straight line to come back and make sure that these are also um, straight as can be compared to the fascia. That way everything looks perfect. Perfect is unattainable, Greg, but we can try. So we'll get these on and then uh, we'll get our we'll get our headers fastened and everything, you know what I'm saying? a little helping hand when you're working by yourself. True block works perfect. So now that we got that line snapped on the tails, got them cut and installed our fascia, we can use that to double check that our header here, our cedar header, is perfectly parallel at 12 inches to our fascia. Then we can go ahead and we're just going to put a a temporary toenail into that to hold it in place until we get our um, our hold down fasteners into it and uh, lock it in place for good. 117. 5'8. Five 5'8 five yeah. is the tip. No, 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 let me use my tape. Let me use my tape. So we're the consistent. Okay. I'm not nervous. I just want this to be and good. You know what? It doesn't have to be perfectly tight in this area, just as long as it's perfectly tight in this 100%, area. 100%, yes. But perfectly tight all around would be the best. But that would be the best. Yeah. <laughs> At this moment, I realized I didn't charge the battery in my microphone for a while, and it went dead. So I'm just going to talk you through what we're doing. So I'm just going to use the beam saw to cut up these cedar posts. And these are going to be non-structural, non-load-bearing, just a visual beam to break up the underside of the porch which we'll you know, obviously share with you as time progresses and as we get to it. But for now, we just had to go ahead and get them installed so that we could finish the porch framing. And this is what we came up with. We just got some nice 45 degree miters and they're gonna sit right into the pocket that you can see there on the right side that we made when we were making the outside header on the porch. Turned out pretty good, nice tight joints. Everything's gonna look good. We've got some temporary screws just holding it into place and we will come back with some lags after all of this is framed. Uh, it was a little bit tricky getting, getting them in because of the tight fit, so we pushed the header out and then just pulled it back in place since it wasn't fastened. Worked out pretty good. Greg and I are just looking at that detail, pretty happy with it. You'll see we got a nice little high five. Now time for some lags. Given these uh, Power Pro lags from uh, Hillman, Pretty beefy. These things are really beefy structural screws. Usually we use a GRK, so we're giving these a go to see what we think. Let's give it a try with the triple hammer. So there's no pre-drill required. Greg, show them there's no pre-drill here. No pre-drill. box is a box of 15 so I've got 12 screws in used one bar on the, uh, the multi-volt battery uh, I got nothing I don't know what to say Greg 
Well, it's nice to see this porch finally start coming together. Uh, I know what it's gonna, or what it should look like because I've seen those renderings. I've never shared those with you guys, so I don't expect you to really have the same level of excitement as I do, but I can promise you, if you stick around, and uh, I'm hoping in the next day or two here, this is really going to come together, and we're gonna get this frame done so you can see how it's how it's gonna look. Obviously, there's a ton of detail work um, that's gonna, gonna have to come um, together to make this all work with the standing seam roof the decking uh, I mean just there's a lot there and I, I still don't have all of it figured out in my head however uh, I'm excited to just kind of dive in and keep it going so if you guys haven't already hit that subscribe button so you follow along if not that's cool just make sure you come back you're gonna want to see how this thing uh, comes together there's a there's a long road yet ahead of us but hopefully you guys join me for it I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and we'll be back tomorrow